Well, hello there, YouTube fans. It's Hair BMW, and contrary to popular belief, no, I haven't moved to the Arctic and taken up dog sledding or bought a Mercedes. Uh, I'm here and, and doing well, and for those uh, longtime visitors who know some of the activities we've had uh, going on here at the homestead, we um, essentially completely gutted and renovated our house while we were living in it. And anyone that knows when the contractor says that'll be, you know, three or four months, it's six or seven months or whatever. Nevertheless, we are finished with that. Um, it's turned out beautifully and, and we're incredibly happy. And um, not to sound uh, too ordinary about it, but uh, as is often the case, we've, um, we collectively, my wife and I, have had a lot of life happening. Um, nothing serious, nothing major, just uh, stuff. So, um, I'm, um, and I know uh, I, I said this before, uh, but it's just one of those things that uh, the, um, the E90 is, um, now don't judge me when you see it, uh, don't judge me please. Um, uh, the E90 is uh, still up on jack stands and um, Hopefully you probably can hear that. No, not hopefully you can hear that, but you can hear that fan running. Um, yeah, summer has uh, summer has uh, come here. Uh, ooh, try and get out of the light. Uh, summer has come here to eastern North Carolina. It was uh, wow, 92 I think today, and the humidity was probably getting close to that. So, hmm. but it's beautiful. Uh, we have had a nice breeze. Anyway, I digress. Um, so the E90. Um, so just as a recap, um, when I bought the car, um, I had two reasons for doing it. One, um, I wanted a, uh, an E90 330i since the first time I ever saw one. I still think it is right up there with the most beautiful of all the BMW sports sedans ever, um, and sports sedans ever. And, uh, B, I wanted a dark car so that I could work on paint correction and all that sort of thing. And I need, wanted something that had a few projects that needed to be done. And uh, my longtime viewers will know that I've uh, had a few more of those than I planned. Uh, primarily the uh, electrical system failure was kind of the big one. That, uh, that one, because there was nothing I could do with it or, or it was certainly was nothing I felt comfortable doing anything with, so. Um, so that was an expensive one. But other than that, the most recent problem that essentially uh, put the old girl up on blocks was a really bad um, grinding sort of sound that appeared from the driver's seat to be passenger, probably center, front. And the most likely candidate was the center carrier bearing. Um, fairly common, I guess. Uh, thing to go wrong. So, uh, in order to get to that, you have to take off the exhaust and all of the underpinning, uh, underpans, and uh, just quite a lot. And that just equates to money. So, in any event, um, I put it up on the jack stands and got all that down, and lo and behold, the center carrier bearing had been replaced not too very long ago apparently because it looks like it's brand new. So that wasn't it. So then it became the way I work and manage my affairs and things is I then had to go about figuring out what were the possibilities and you know just doing research and reading and because it's not my only car I had the luxury now of not having to worry about it. So, um, so I'm going to flip you around now and, um, we'll kind of go over some of the, some of the things that are going on. Okay. So here, here's the old girl. And as I said, please don't judge me on the state of the car. Um, it, I don't dare touch it. Uh, you can see where I had a friend over the other day and he, leaned up against the fender. I don't, I don't dare touch it because, um, that's the easiest way to scratch and, and mess up 
the, the paint. So I'm just gonna wait until I get it outside and give it a good hose down. So let me run down the list of projects. So uh, number one, I've got to replace the bolts that are in the drive shaft uh, to the back of the transmission because when I remove them, they're one time use. So those have to go back on. The exhaust, which you can see down there, has to go back on. Then all the underpans have to go back on. And that will essentially button up what was undone to check the center carrier bearing. Number two, the grinding noise. Um, the next plan of attack is, or the, I should say the next most probable thing, is probably wheel bearings. Um, either one front, both front, or rear. I don't know. So, um, the plan for that is I need to um, remove the brake, shoes, and caliper. And the first thing is, let me see if I can find where it is. Yes, here it is. Is I went to my uh, favorite store, Harbor Freight, and bought the little stand with the little uh, micrometer or whatever that thing is called. And I will set that up. And uh, the first thing to check is if the rotors are warped and that essentially that point will will sort of go on here and then you spin the wheel and you see. And by having this off, uh, the theory is, I, I'll, I'll see because I don't know, but if you can really spin this, you can hear uh, sometimes um, if the bearing is bad. And then the third test, as I understand it, is even with the brake caliper off, is you bolt the wheel back on and then you sort of try and uh, rock with the, the torque that you get with having the wheel and tire on here back and forth. And if there's any sort of movement there that that will indicate that it's a bearing, hub bearing or several. So pretty straightforward diagnostics, I think. Um, and from what I've read, not the worst repair in the world. Um, so, number one. Uh, number two, there has been a small but persistent leak on the oil pan. Again, a not an unusual um, scenario. And, um, well, of course you're not going to be able to see back in there. Uh, but the most effective way that I've been able to figure out how to do that was off of the um, uh, E90 uh, post, um, and this fella, um, this fella here, did a really excellent write-up with pictures and, and everything. And essentially, the idea is not a surprise to anybody who owns a BMW, um, but there's no dipstick on this engine, so there is an oil sensor that sticks up in the bottom of the pan. All right, so uh, just got called up for dinner, so I'm not sure where I left off, but essentially I think I was talking about the uh, oil pan has a sending unit inside which sends the um, oil level <clears throat> to the trip computer and several of the bolts that go around the bottom of the pan are leaking. So, um, using again uh, using this fella's uh, instructions <clears throat> what you have to do in order to get enough clearance and I'm going to get down as best I can here on the floor um, and really it's a, a pretty straightforward operation is you have to support the engine from above and over there you can see the uh, engine support bar, which I'll talk about in a minute. Uh, you support the engine from above, <clears throat> and then there are six bolts that hold this uh, this whole big uh, steering subframe on, and you essentially just lower it down, and you get about uh, three or four inches. And he said he was able to get the whole oil pan off, which I think you can just see a little bit of right there. So, <clears throat> a couple of weekends ago, I did that, 
and I got nowhere. I got two of the bolts out and that was it. So the issue is, uh, now I, I don't have every tool in the world, but I have a pretty good selection and it, it, I have no doubt that, that he and others have been able to do it. Uh, but I swear I, I couldn't do it. So <clears throat> that will have to become plan B. <coughs> Excuse me. So I'm still working on that. So um, the other issue, as I was saying with this uh, engine bar, because you can see I've got, you know, pretty much the whole front of the, <coughs> the car taken off, is that the lifting eye is so far to the front of the car that when you put the bar across, you know, your, your way out here, which you can see there's, there's not much there. And to be quite frank, um, I had, I, I did not at all feel comfortable having all of the weight here with, you know, with, with nothing underneath. <clears throat> so, uh, I rigged up a, a couple of, of, uh, uh, supports that went down from here and up underneath that bar going across and 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 I felt comfortable with that so um, so the oil pan you can see I've I've got uh, I've got my my gasket kit already um, all the bolts and everything I've got all of that stuff ready <clears throat> it's just a matter of uh, coming up with plan B uh, so Next step, um, I've got new uh, uh, idler uh, pulleys and new belt, so that all gets done. Uh, of course, new uh, new oil filter, um, all new radiator uh, fluid, um, and again, you know the the good and the bad of owning a BMW is. <clears throat> In order to get all this amazing material and equipment and things in here, um, it, it's almost impossible, really, to even be able to try and show you um, with with any sense of clarity at all. But uh, up in here, uh, can you see my finger? Yeah, I don't think it's going to show up, but you can see all the way back up in here is the um, water pump which is electric and the thermostat and again the Bavarian Auto uh, Auto on Bavarian Auto <clears throat> excuse me he's got a really good video on how to replace those by essentially uh, dropping the um, uh, front sway bar and then accessing it from underneath and he was doing it on a lift and I can see if you're doing it on a lift how that would be reasonably practical um, however uh, I don't see it happening for me anyway <clears throat> in my advancing spreading years so uh, that's why I took the opportunity to take all of this uh, clear all of this space out here so that I can do the front end and then um, I can have much easier access uh, all the way down in there which is where the water pump and the uh, thermostat are so <clears throat> excuse me you can see here um, I think I'm pretty much set as far as I know I have everything uh, belts thermostat that's the uh, bolt kit for the uh, oil pan, um, the water pump, uh, let's see, there's, uh, you know, all the various uh, <clears throat> parts and bits and bobs, uh, so I'm not even sure it's been so long now what that is, oh, that's some of the pulleys, uh, I believe that's the uh, water pump, and yeah, some more of the pulleys, so <clears throat> that and the uh, that and the uh, uh, gasket kit should get me everywhere I need. So uh, potentially the only, really the only thing left I have to get are the drive shaft bolts and then uh, 
just depending on what it turns out to be the noise. Um, while it's a kind of a crazy thing to say, I'm sort of hoping it's one of these wheel bearings. Um, although I say one of these wheel bearings, but uh, I wouldn't do just one. So if it turns out it's a front one, I, I would, you know, do both the fronts. And, uh, yeah, other than that, you can see I've got parts spread all over the garage here. <clears throat> I try to keep them organized and, and, um, you know, they've gotten a little dusty, but that's okay. And, um. Uh, you can see there's a bunch more uh, back there. That's a lot of the under undercarriage pieces, the heat shields, inner fender wells, or inner fender liners. There's the two big uh, bottom pans, which are really in, in bad shape. <clears throat> and I may or may not try and replace those. But as you all know who get involved in this, this can get to be a fairly expensive process. Uh, bit by bit by bit by bit but that's okay um, it's it's about the journey and the process and the learning so that's okay and um, I thought that I would show you all because you probably don't often get to see the front of your car but if you have a temperature sensor in your car um, that's where it's actually mounted it's uh, in that sort of uh, vacant area behind the bumper and the kidney grills and, and there it is so <clears throat> anyway I'm going to flip you back around again, and uh, and that'll be it. Okay, folks, so um, there you go. It's been quite a long time since I've uh, done a video, as I've already covered. And you can see I've got my work cut out for me, and I have been um, <clears throat> accumulating some um, additional pieces for my GoPro and for my little uh, hmm, digital camera. So between the two of those and my trusty iPhone here, I really hope to be able to um, get back to doing some filming. <clears throat> but I have to I have to resolve the the issue of of how to get to the um, the oil pan. Um, yeah, uh, and that that's just it's just cumbersome. It's I don't think it's going to be that difficult really, but it's just going to be cumbersome, and I I don't. I thought about just going on and not worrying about it and just suffering with a little bit of oil leak, but you know, I'm not leaving my, my baby leaking oil. Um, I mean, you know, so, uh, that's about it. Um, one final note is, is, um, it, it's, um, quite an amazing community that we all uh, belong to here. And I, I certainly, um, have been amazed at the number of, <clears throat> excuse me, the number of people who have uh, you know commented and sent uh, some IMs and things and just uh, essentially wanted to make sure that I was okay because I had sort of dropped off the face of the earth and um, my fault I really should have just posted here and there just to say yeah I'm, I'm here and um, just wading through other things in life and and uh, you know getting back to this uh, as soon as I can I if I remember right one of the last videos I posted showed uh, just piles and piles and piles of belongings here in the garage and and you can see I've I've done pretty well um, at uh, getting things cleaned up <clears throat> and um, so uh, I say you can see pretty well and you're looking at my ugly mug instead but um, anyway I have uh, the the garage is in good shape and I'm I'm happy with it and we had uh, the uh, um, refrigerator blew, actually burned up a motor, um, this weekend and scared the, scared the wife to death because I was, uh, an hour or so away on my way to a family graduation and she called and had gotten out of bed and smelled smoke and, you know, that's a terrifying sort of thing and it <clears throat> turns out that we have some incredibly good neighbors and they rushed over and went through the house top to bottom feeling and touching outlets and looking and smelling and trying to determine what it was and um, I'm eternally grateful for that um, but it still it was a, a very a freaky feeling because we couldn't identify it we couldn't find it we couldn't you know and uh, it was in a particular place at the bottom of the stairs um, we live in on a three-level house and uh, after a while I later in the day I got home and I went to the refrigerator and I noticed that the freezer 
was soft. Uh, hmm. And then I thought, well, the motor, the fan motor is still running in the refrigerator, and therefore, if some part of it burns out, the fan is going to blow it across the kitchen and voila, right to the bottom of the stairs. So uh, that was our working hypothesis, and it turns out that something has definitely gone bad in the refrigerator. So once we emptied it and unplugged it and, and whatnot, uh, smell's gone. And uh, so there is a, um, a, a very deep sense of relief in just knowing what the answer is, because that's just always that wondering, wondering, wondering. So uh, that's about it. I'm, uh, I'm going to finish up now, and you know me, I like to ramble, 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 ramble. Um, but I am... Uh, I'm looking forward to uh, the, the possibility soon of being able to get back in and get back to work and get back on some of these projects. There's a whole lot of reassembly here. <laughs> uh, yeah, I took good notes and pictures and things when I took it apart, but my word, <laughs> a lot of bits and pieces. And, uh, you know, my plan, as always, is to clean, 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 scrub everything I can. And if I decide to keep all those... Um, underpans and and things like that uh, then I'll I'll scrub them good and uh, as you all know I'm a, a fan of that uh, Duplicolor um, vinyl uh, dye and I probably just give them all a good coat of that just to you know make them look nice and clean and uh, so I think that's about it um, thanks again to everybody who has subscribed and been with me for now a number of years and for those of you who continue to subscribe uh i am eternally grateful i think it's a an amazing community uh, that youtube provides for anyone who um, just feels like they have something to offer um, and i uh, get tremendous enjoyment out of it and um, hopefully it provides some use and maybe a little entertainment for for all of you so thanks again, and uh, I look forward to uh, talking with you all again soon. So goodbye.